Thank you. Well, there is a lot of you. <laughs> Hello. What are the things you know? Your name. Where you are at the moment, or at least I, I hope you do. <laughs> Where you live. What you like. Although this is a little bit more complicated question. How many people live in Poland when women got voting rights? See, you, you know things. And all of them are pieces of data. And once you start looking at them this way, once, once you start looking at them from the distance, you can do something about them. You want examples? You know your name, his name and her name, and you form a group. You can talk to each other and do something together. Or you live on a street with a few shops, and you have a favorite one, and you decide to go there and not else, and this choice makes you happy. Or there is a problem in a school where your kid goes, and you know the school has an internet website, you find contact details, you call them, you talk to them, you schedule a meeting, I don't know, you ultimately solve a problem. Because information allows you to take an action and make a choice. Now, there are also lots of things you don't know about. And when it comes to some, you don't even care. And that's okay. Why be interested in things you don't like? But films or boring books, we do live in the age of information overload. And it's okay to choose what you want to listen to and what you decide to treat as white noise. But <laughs> there are also lots, lots of things you, you don't even know you could be interested in if you only knew. And there is a special sort of information that we're all entitled to. It's called public information. It is produced because we pay our taxes. It describes our cities, our countries, our lives in a way. And I talk about all sorts of budgets that show how much money was spent on what, or city transport data, bus schedules, or maps, lots of maps, or urban plans, and more. Warsaw just opened over 200 of data sets. Some of them are the ones I just mentioned. You're not from Warsaw? Check out your city's website, your country's website. See what's available there, what's not available there, and think what you can do with available information. Is there any social problem you could work on? Is there anything particularly annoying about your everyday life in your neighborhood, in your city that you could address? Treat public information as an asset. We're entitled to public information through a special law. It's called Freedom of Information Act. And its Polish version is the law on access to public information. And this act allows anyone to request public information, public data, public assets from public institutions or private bodies that run public tasks, trade unions and political parties you can, can request the information orally or in a written form, and the institutions must respond within 14 days. So, you know, if you have lots of time and even more motivation, you can sit, write requests, send them along, then, for example, read through scans of handwritten documents, because this is how data is stored sometimes, you know. Someone just made a note, it was scanned, it is stored somewhere. This is data. And then you receive it if you request regularly, let's say every 14 days. You can also request information orally. You can go to your local city council, ask about it. And you might not get it simply because sometimes people in power, they don't know either. They don't know that you have the right to know. And you actually do. With open data, it's different. 
on a five-star scale of openness, imagine this scale, a data set that's really open, the most open one could say, is a set that's publicly available on the internet. And it's available for reuse, which means it's published under an open license. It is in a machine-readable format, so a scan of a hundred in document would not qualify. It can be interconnected with other data sets, and it can be identified by a URL. Does it sound tough and technical and complex? It might. But the truth is that what it means is that there are algorithms, or you can make up algorithms, that will be applied to this data set or to those data sets so that you can come up with, with tools. Because technology is a tool. Data is also a tool. And those, those tools can be useful and can be social. And if you want examples, um, for example, you can put budget data on a map to literally understand where does your money go. It's interesting. Um, you, can, you can build a tool so that a disabled person can plan their journey through the city in a way that they would avoid bumps and staircases. It's going to make their life easier. You can mix up pollution data with a map in real time, which will mean that you will be able to assess what's going to be the level of the pollution in that given place, in that given moment. And so you decide to go jogging elsewhere. And if you want more examples, uh, there is one that I find particularly cute. And um, it was a winner of uh, an applications contest in Amsterdam. And it mixed open public data with crowdsourced data. Crowdsourced data is a data that comes from the crowd, from the people, from the companies, from, from the people, basically. And uh, this app, it visualized the supplies in a local shop. And the sole little purpose of it was that you would not order everything online. You would actually go to a local shop to pick it up. And at the beginning, I talked about living on the street with free shops and making a choice about where to go and that making you happy. Also, probably this human interaction making you happy. So, so those things, there might be little, but you know, when you put lots of little things together, it becomes big. And um, talking about the little things, did you know that every, every tree in Warsaw has its own number? Like every single tree? Can you imagine how much data then a city like Warsaw has in store? Millions, quadrillions, and we don't even know because the city doesn't know itself. Because everything is a piece of data, if you look at it this way, if a tree is. So look around you and think how much we can find out or do if we only treat and understood information as data and openly share it. Open data is not just another buzzword. It is important. For me, it is important. Because you can do magic with information, and most of all, you can understand. And once you understand, you can make choices. It is really better to know than not to know, because information is power. It really, really is. Thank you. We uh, met at a, a startup event, actually, a few weeks back. Um, and I was actually immediately inspired to, to invite you here because uh, the stuff that you talk about is complicated, but you make it accessible to the people who are not engineers. Because, of course, startups are not just geeks working at computers. Startups are um, organizations that create value, um, and uh, they are built by not just engineers. Um, if uh, and I mean there are there, there are lots of lots of initiatives, Code for America, Code you know, Code Lepolsky, that sort of stuff. Um, how do you see this sort of um, cooperation between the world of technology and the world of let's let's say you know humanities or um, social entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it? How do you see this sort of thing developing in this city, in in this country? Um, I th I think we're getting into the right moment. 
because this hype around technology, technology being the things we talk about instead of talking about real problems using technology, being mature enough to start using technology as a tool, I think it kind of happened. And I also believe that like, real social innovation can only happen within a community. And I think we're building those communities. And the examples you just, you just mentioned, and Koduj dla Polski, for example, or, or many projects I'm working on, are, are just about bringing different kind of people together so that we can understand better how to co-create. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I see a bright future. <laughs> Excellent. Data isn't information, is information isn't knowledge, and knowledge, knowledge isn't wisdom. But data is at kind of the beginning of that sentence. Um, Alicia is going to be here for, for a little while. If uh, you have ideas of how to cooperate, I'm sure she would love to talk. I will. Alicia, Alicia Peszkowska. Thank you very much. <laughs>